Hello and welcome everybody to the Think Bamboo podcast. Today we're here with uh, Hans Friedrich. He has an amazing um, background uh, with bamboo and also current projects, extremely interesting. And I'm um, super excited to have him today on the podcast. Um, welcome, Hans. Good to be with you, JJ. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so um, you've been basically working with or or on and and with bamboo like for the last twenty years or so. Is that or or even longer? Well, with bamboo specifically, not that long. Um, you know, my background really is in 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 nature conservation and international development. Um, I've worked yeah. in Africa, I've worked in Asia, um, and I spent about 10 years with the headquarters of the International Union for Conservation of Nature in Switzerland. Um, yeah. And from there, I moved to Beijing. And in Beijing, I was the director general, the CEO of the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization, which is the only intergovernmental organization, uh, the international organization that deals with bamboo. Um, it's an interesting organization. It's It's... I say a bit like I always say the United Nations of bamboo. It's an intergovernmental treaty based, very official institution. Um, the headquarters are in Beijing in China. And when I left, we had something like 45 member states uh, around the world. You know, governments become a member of IMBA. So it's member states. That's why I said it's like the United Nations. And I think by now they've actually grown to about 50. Yeah, um, they've been so growing. That was my my first real engagement with bamboo. Um, but I've been involved in bamboo off and on before that as well. I mean, it's pretty amazing from my point of view. I remember when I first contacted you, I was in the Amazon and was looking for a contact regarding bamboo uh, seedlings. And I was like, maybe I have to contact the, like, I think you were the, the president or some role like that at Imbar, right? That's right. I yeah, the director general, the CEO, director, the basically. CEO, exactly. And and you were very kind and helped me with contact. And uh, so I was uh, super positive. And it worked. Yes, yes, it did work. <laughs> exactly. And now you're like um, you're focusing more on Europe. And I think this is a very interesting topic um, currently also because uh, uh, like most people don't think bamboo and Europe are like uh, matching uh, things mm. and they are mm. right. <laughs> well, yeah, let me tell you, I say I, I, I spent five years in China as the, uh, the head of that bamboo organization. Um, and when I left in 2019, I, I joined the World Bamboo Organization as an ambassador. So I'm one of the global ambassadors of the World Bamboo Organization, which is, you know, it's sort of a, a slightly different institution. It's an NGO based in the States. Mm -hmm. It's more of a network of bamboo specialists. You know, Imbar is States. Um, mm -hmm. The World Bamboo Organization is more individuals, um, but I, I you know, maintained my connections there and I joined a, a company, Bamboo Logic, um, a Dutch company. I happen to be Dutch myself, so that made it easier. Um, and they asked if I wanted to join them to start up a European bamboo program. Now, as you say, you know, bamboo in Europe is, is um, well, the bamboo plant in Europe are maybe uh, odd bed partners. But the interesting thing is, you know, even when I was in China, I realized because IMBA maintains the international trade registration that most of the, the stuff that is produced in, in Asia, and let's be honest, most of that is produced in China, is yeah. actually sold in Europe and in the States internationally. I mean, most, you know, there's an enormous internal domestic industry in China. Mm -hmm. um, I always love to say it's 60 billion US dollars, you know, not million, billion. billion that, right. was, that was five years ago. It's grown since then. But there's also an international trade. And the international trade is really from Asia, and that's the majority China, to the US and Europe. And Europe is the largest market. So while bamboo may not be a natural plant in Europe, there is a great appetite for all kinds of bamboo products, bamboo things. Europeans love that idea. Absolutely. So that knowing there is that market potential linked with the fact that when I came to Europe, you know, the European Union started to talk about green development and, and how we can be more sustainable. And there's lots of things going on in Brussels where the member states of the European Union are being told 
you know, think about nature, think about sustainability, think about climate change. So the development of, of, of green issues in Europe is becoming higher and higher on the agenda. And the third issue was that in Southern Europe, and we're thinking Portugal, Spain, Italy to an extent, Greece maybe, there's a lot of, of agriculture land that is basically fallow. You know, farmers mm -hmm. have left. Farmers have basically decided it wasn't worth it. They've gone to the cities. The newer generations, the younger generations aren't always interested. So there's a lot of agricultural land that is actually not being used. Mm -hmm. And we found, therefore, that there was an interest both at the national and at the local level to do something different, to do something new. Bringing all those things together meant that we, we bought some land in Portugal and, and basically said, let's start planting bamboo as an, you know, as an agricultural crop, really. And yeah. I think it is important, you know, with my background in nature conservation, people always say, oh, but you shouldn't plant an indigenous, a non-indigenous species in a new environment. I would agree. I wouldn't Classic. give bamboo to a forest <laughs> and a national park. But to use it as a crop, you know, basically as an agri agricultural activity to actually grow bamboo instead of they grew beforehand, I think, pine trees that didn't work at all instead of, you know, I don't know, whatever other agricultural crop is being grown around us. Mm -hmm. Why not bamboo? Um, and I think there, you know, the issue, the question is, well, it's not a natural species. Potatoes were not natural. In exactly. Tomatoes either. Eats potatoes, you know. <laughs> yeah. Tomatoes weren't natural either. So, exactly. you know, things change. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and the climate, uh, likewise, I mean, we're having very hot summers. We are having like different winters. So we yeah. could say like, maybe even if we haven't, if we wouldn't bring the bamboo ourselves, it will, it, it will grow actually, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> because of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the other thing, JJ, that was an interesting one that I wasn't aware of. Um, and I think even my colleagues, you know, when we started this, this, this initiative in Portugal and we made some noise and, and uh, we had to go to the local authority, to the regional authority, to the national authorities, all of a sudden farmers in the area came to us and said, you know, we've got a hectare of bamboo, half a hectare of bamboo, wow. a little plot. For some reasons, people have planted bamboo in the past. Often they couldn't even remember why. You know, my father planted bamboo. Well, yeah, he thought it was interesting. And yeah. we've got these poles and we don't know what to do with them. Wow. So, so that's interesting that's, also to, to see how well it has developed and what are issues yeah. maybe locally. And, and that's the good thing. There are no issues locally. It grows wow. very, very help, hep, happily. Nice poles, strong poles. Um, and, and the great thing for us is that whilst we are you know, basically developing a new forest, we've planted, we started planting. Unfortunately, with COVID, it all got shunted a bit. So they've only been in the soil for about two years. Wow. We have and access to these existing woodlots. So we can actually already start talking about, you know, here are bamboo poles. This is what you can do with it. And we're selling the poles from other people. It helps for ad adoption. Absolutely. And Hans, can you tell me maybe what kind of bamboo type you selected there? Or was it the one you already found there, like which was planted previously? Or have you um, select selected like various types because yes, of the I mean, flowering? I think, <laughs> well, I mean, as you can imagine, the, the main species that we are planting is the, the Chinese species, the Mosu bamboo. The Mosu, um, okay. And that's the one, you know, the, the running bamboo that everybody is very worried about. And again, <laughs> um, you know, we can talk about that separately, but the, the, the quick answer is as long as it's managed, it's not a problem. Exactly. Uh, like everything. Like everything. Exactly. Like every, yeah. um, we are trying a few others. We've got six species. Um, I think we're using bambusa. We um, have tried dendrocalamus. Didn't seem to go very well. It's really not hot enough for that. The Wild climate doesn't seem to work. Um, not at all. No, I don't know why. But we are trying some others as well because it the would soil. be nice to have a mix. What about the soil? Is it, uh, I mean, I've never been there, but um, that has to do with the climate and the soil, probably like True. really yeah. two um, yeah. variables. Uh, and the climate, I, I have we to know... admit, I can't give you the details, but I know that my colleagues um, investigated and did soil sampling and we worked with the university and basically found that it is totally fine. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, no, bamboo that, that, is super adaptable, right? It, it grows well, almost anywhere, thing. but it depends what type of bamboo and True. like the local or micro um, environment. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And and of course water. I mean, I have to be honest, JJ, again, you know, people's you know, this 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 concern that people seem to have that bamboo uses lots yeah. and lots and lots of water. And I always say no, 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 no. Like eucalyptus, because... right? Like they think it's like a, a, a eucalyptus really right. Like it great... sucks out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's no, no, not no, like no. that. Not at all. But of course, if you start a plantation, you start a new a new new forest, yeah, you have to irrigate. So we do actually have both um two surface ponds you know lakes if you mm -hmm. want to call them um that we have access to uh, on our land actually we have a borehole so that's that's a backup and okay. the other good thing is that we're actually next to the river so if all that would fail Great. we that's, would even have access that's amazing so, and, and basically what you're doing you're gonna you know you're gonna increase the rainfall in future because of the bamboo forest so, i mean exactly. this is like yeah. this is amazing <laughs> there is almost no other uh, crop that uh, it does, creates, that. does that, right? I mean, this is, uh, I think that's the most true. important part, you know, because everybody was like, yeah, you need water. Of course, everything needs water unless it's a cactus, right? <laughs> But uh, I mean, you, yeah. after, once it's like running the, the natural system, it's going to be like a water tank. It's going to retain, it's going to filter the water and it's going to like uh, do the whole uh a cycle i mean probably there is like no more forest at all or generally no. speaking yeah very little so i mean this is really going to be a green patch and the great thing is jj when we started we you know we say we had some land we're talking about 150 hectares at the moment we've just signed an agreement with a with a british company a few months ago a few weeks ago and that will allow us to really expand so we are now aiming for a thousand hectares and that would mean you know a forest Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, this is huge for for Portugal and and for uh, Europe. I think I don't know of anything in France that big, or oh, no. No, 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 no. I mean, in Italy, the interesting thing is there is a couple of companies in Italy that we know of. Um, we can't really say we work with them, but we know them well. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about similar figures, but I think the difference there is they're talking about lots and lots of little plots. You know, mm. they work with farmers, so mm -hmm. individual farmers that plant bamboo. It's and another approach. Whatever, it adds up to, I don't know, several hundred hectares. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a different sort of business model. We're looking at really planting large, large wow. areas. And probably also like much more economic investment at the beginning, for sure. <laughs> True, which is yeah. why it was really good to have this partnership with a large British company. I imagine. And can you maybe uh, give some insights regarding like the next steps? I mean, probably, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but maybe five years or so, the muscle bamboo will be like uh, in the adult cycle, right? Yep, and then you have like right. this continuous cycle of, uh, I don't know, I don't, I'm not, I don't know so much about the muscle, but maybe 70 or 120 years. What's the lifespan of muscle? Oh, yes. Um, and the good, the good thing is because it's running bamboo, I mean, it, it basically regenerates itself completely. So Constantly. it might be even more than that. You know, Constantly. the bamboo forest in China, and, and they, are, they are massive. I mean, you're talking, China has 3 million hectares of natural bamboo and another 4 million hectares of planted. Wow. But the natural bamboo has been there forever. And how's the flowering there? I mean, this is something I personally haven't witnessed yet. And maybe you have. And uh, having been in China, maybe you can give some insights because I think this is also something that most people who are interested about bamboo have little clue about, which mm -hmm. is the flowering. True. I mean, it's very different. You know, with clumping bamboo, it flowers once every 50, 70 years or whatever, and it dies. Mm -hmm. Moza bamboo doesn't. I mean, um, I have to admit, I didn't actually know it flowers. I thought it didn't. But my colleagues tell me, no, 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 there is flowering, there is seed. But, uh, but, but it doesn't die. Wow. I so mean, it's different. That's the interesting thing about bamboo, right? Or what I think is interesting. We have so much like knowledge already, but we're still probably we're like still just like yes. this much. Oh, no, true. <laughs> wow. and, and, you know, JJ, I mean, when I was with Imba, we, we carried out a survey or an inventory. We, we did basically the, the, the in, in inventory of bamboo and rattan together with Q Royal Botanical Gardens in the UK because they have a couple of experts in that field. And we found something like 1,470 different species. Yeah. Now, I know since that time, new species have been discovered in Mexico, in Madagascar, I think in Brazil, in China. So, you know, you're talking about, let's say, 1,500 different species. For sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, for some of them, we know, we know nothing, basically. Yeah. 
Um, exactly. I guess most is presumably the best researched one because of China. Mm -hmm. But of course, a lot of that research is local research written up in Chinese mm -hmm. language and therefore not necessarily accessible yeah. to the English speaking world. Yeah. And, and Guadua is also an example um, or a similar like challenge because it's the Latin American bamboo. This is where mm -hmm. I have my bamboo background the last years, but uh, they're like the Guadua angusifolia. And mm. this specific one has like minimum five very different types, one with oh. thorns, without thorns, one which is really straight. And uh -huh. scientifically, there is like not even a, a, a scientific name for them. You know, it's like, oh, it's just a Guadu Angustifolia. It's a the different one. <laughs> really? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the most used one, I think, in the US and mm -hmm. in Europe. Makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. of the, uh, the the distance, and it's True. it's slightly also harder um, mm -hmm. um, than the moso, which is uh, I think what I've understood mostly used as application, like raw material application for um, things which are not um, construction. So mm -hmm. I don't know what um, that would be. Another thing interesting, maybe. Um, do you already? Uh, you probably have a, a business plan and everything with the, the outlook and all that. But what's like the main application of this mosso bamboo you have planted in Portugal um, in the future? What do you think? Um, or is it something you can't talk about? Or, or uh... No, 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 we, we can. I mean, I, I don't think I can use names. But um, basically, our plan is that when we have enough bamboo, we want to set up, you know, some pre-processing facilities in Portugal. On so location. We can yeah, we can basically treat. Um, we can we can make slats, which that in in many cases is really you know the, the the easiest way to transport because transporting poles means you're transporting a lot of air. air. Yes. <laughs> so you know if we're going to use it, we might actually make slats and then get them up, get them over to to other companies that will go further. We will. We're not really planning to do much more ourselves, but we've already got discussions with other companies going. Um, one of them, interesting enough, it's not even so much the slats, it's looking at the fiber. Um, there's actually, um, there is a, a clothing manufacturer that is at the moment operating in Portugal, um, um, but they get their raw material, their pulp from China. And they're very, very keen to have locally made pulp. Um, the other interesting thing is that we are working with them on seeing how we could actually extract the pulp without using the chemicals. You know, yeah. sort of, sort of a, a proper sustainable yeah. method, which is possible. So we're also, doing some research with the university in Portugal. Also, um, maybe because in hindsight, because like what I've been reading is like that bamboo should be like antibacterial. Now, if we hmm. use a lot of chemicals to extract the bamboo, probably the antibacterial um, property is uh, <laughs> lost. <laughs> it's I guess it's less. Um, I. I've always thought it would be lost. I had an interesting discussion with a company in Ireland who are manufacturing underwear from bamboo. And they said they've been testing their, 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 their actual products mm -hmm. um, and they found that it still has antibacterial properties. I assume not as much as raw bamboo, but she said, no, 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 no. She said, we, we were worried about that. We had this tested at a laboratory in, in, in Ireland. And they found that there still was some antibacterial uh, aspects to it. I mean, but but is... I mean, you know, clothing is one thing. Um, we are talking also about possible paper production. You know, again, use the pulp. There are there are some some companies that are using again bamboo pulp for paper manufacturing in Europe, mm -hmm. and they're very keen. We're also talking about using the fibers for composite manufacturing, with you know discussing that with companies that again are already in this business to to basically see how bamboo bamboo fiber could actually be an alternative to to glass fiber or even car, carbon fiber you mm -hmm. know for making things like 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 the holes of boats or or boats. Bike, well no no more more thin Bigger. veneers on top of you know i say literally instead of glass fiber so you're thinking about boat holes car um what do you call it the, the, the outside of a car yeah, 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 all that fiber panels uh, that's yeah. right wow so i mean again you know these are companies that are already using bamboo mm -hmm. and again they're getting their stuff at the moment from the mm -hmm. other side of the world so they're all very keen to actually source the bamboo locally and, and the then of course the there right is timing. also the, the the construction side 
Um, and as you're quite right, most of bamboo is normally used in China also for engineered bamboo. So the idea is, you know, you split the cone into slats and you blind it back together. So you have a panel um, of, of engineered bamboo. And that's what, what, what architects in, in Northern Europe are particularly interested in at the moment. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because also all the prices of raw material like uh, wood or uh, metal, aluminium have skyrocketed. And uh, yeah. probably like something regenerative like bamboo would be more than a, a real alternative nowadays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just have to have it, right? <laughs> so this you're the doing thing. the right I mean, thing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I say that's the interesting thing with many, many of these companies. They said, look, we are using bamboo, but getting it on the other side from the other side of the world there's all kinds of questions and with the social political uh this you know, movements let's say what's going on in the world there's also questions about how reliable that supply would be um so they're very keen to to see if we can actually get it in europe done and used um, under european conditions with european guidelines european um, um European conditions. made in bamboo, uh, exactly. <laughs> made in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. And what or what is currently like the biggest challenge be, um, you're you're facing um, with that operation in, in Portugal, um, growing bamboo there? It's it's the, the, the lack of understanding, really. You know, I mean, as I said earlier, we still find, yes, many people, um, both both as customers, um, but also, you know, people in, in, in various administrations who are worried that, that they don't really understand what bamboo is. They've heard stories about invasiveness. They, you know, are concerned about the, the water issues. They simply talk about the fact they that it's not know. a natural plant and therefore we don't want it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's that, it's that, you know, lack of, of, of I guess, realization of what bamboo could do. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the a lot benefits. of yeah there's a lot of awareness raising to be done a lot of 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 education um at various levels and i think that's that's really the the biggest challenge we've got the other challenge for us um and that's the great thing that that we have an excellent partner is built uh, planting material you know that as you know bamboo doesn't always grow from seed and if it does it takes time so how can you basically get enough young plants to be able to actually to get thousands of hectares. Yeah. So and, are you doing genetic... We are working with, with a, a, a plantation in Belgium, which is one of the largest bamboo plantations. They, they have lots of plants in stock. They use seed, um, but they also use the uh, tissue culture method. That's and that would allow you to actually, you know, get large quantity. Yeah. From one, I think from one, like, what is it? I don't know what they extract, like thousands of, of seeds, right? That's it's right. Made in a laboratory, and uh, you need like some kind of hardware and all that. But it's pretty... true. I mean, you need the laboratory facilities. But you know, the the advantage is that it's it's sterile, so there's no chance of any any bugs or or, or diseases. Mm -hmm. The risk is maybe that if you happen to start with a with with a mother plant that had a problem, all the others will have it as well. But you know, again, if if you know what you're doing, um, that's not a that's not a problem. I think, and say this is. This is Oprins, you know, Jan Oprins, who's been in the business for, I don't know, 40 years or so. I mean, wow. he really is a man who who is one of the world's uh, experts on on growing bamboo. So we're That's very lucky sure that helps. he's with us. So you're you're like working with them and are you like shipping like the really small like seedlings or how what's the like what's the work around there? I say his his main uh, um, nursery is in Belgium. He has uh, greenhouses further south in Spain. So we're sort of shipping them from Belgium, sometimes to Spain, and then to our own supply. Cool. Um, and, and basically, after a year, they go in the ground. And we're talking here, you said 1,000 hectares. So um, let's mm. let's try to explain how many bamboos we have per Oof. hectare. Like Whoa. a lot, right? Yes, goodness. Um, Ah, uh, that's a figure I should have at the tip of my fingers, and I don't. <laughs> but maybe between if uh, if it's um, well, th that's a question. Sort of planted every three meters. That, so, that's a, so, is it three meters like in in, in basically in yeah, square? Okay. yeah as a grid. So it could be um, it could be more than five six hundred per uh, 
per yeah. hectare, which is hundred per hundred like meters yeah. for yeah. all the American um, mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. listening. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's it's a lot of seeds per um, or seedlings yeah. per hectare. And um, do you plant them like already when they're small, or do you like wait until they have a specific size to be sure? We wait they... about yeah. I mean, they go in the ground when they're about one to two years old. The, so so they are actually already one, they have a size one meter one and a half meter or what's the one meter maybe yeah if that you know sort of 80 centimeters mm -hmm. one meter it's now, also visually meter, good but... right because then you know the bamboo is here and and mm -hmm. it should grow yeah, you can see it yeah, exactly yeah. The, true, true yeah i had the same thing I mean, there well, one of the challenges we found jj again people always say oh it's not good for biodiversity Biodiversity loves it. <laughs> and that's, that's one of our challenges. Probably that they have a lot of that, sugar content, the, the yeah, leaves, because they grow so We fast. found that all sorts of little animals actually are very happy. Yeah, um, cool. And that's, gonna, that's, that's yeah, something are, we hadn't really thought of. This is something which is also uh, talkable uh, and interesting. Are you like doing any studies on uh, biodiversity enhancement or increase like before the bamboo, between the bamboo, and once the bamboo is set up? Or is it something mm -hmm. you're considering? Uh... Definitely. I mean, I think that the issue is, again, you know, we are not starting from, from I mean, we're certainly not, not cutting down a forest to plant bamboo. I mean, that should never Absolutely. happen. We, we basically have barren soil. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, a but lot you of have, this is... Exactly. So you have probably There's very nothing. low microorganism in the yeah. top soil, in the yeah. bottom soil also probably very not low. Much. Because... Not much. And so... And, we... and, and nothing on the ground. So no. in fact... You know, we're already finding, even with the, the small bamboo plants, we get, you know, mushrooms growing. We get other little things growing underneath. I say that animals are coming because we have the bamboo seedlings. So they, they, they see that there's birds coming in already because they see the green. So whilst we, we are not doing any biodiversity monitoring at the moment, we, we already know that it's getting better. Once we have the forest growing, I hope we can get some students in to actually do some proper surveys. That would be amazing for also the whole uh, added value on top of the like core economic business. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. 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 Because and of course, I mean, yeah, the, there is another value, and that's the carbon credits. Of and this is, again is something, you know, we, we hadn't even worked that into our business model when we started. But now it's certainly one of the added advantages that yeah. as it grows, as it sucks up CO2, this is all of a sudden becoming a financial investment as well. And much more interesting than classic tree uh, <laughs> comparing the I numbers. would say so, but, you know, I'm biased, I guess. <laughs> of course, we are both probably. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but it's so true. You know, these all these discussions at the moment about carbon offsets by, by planting trees or by enhancing natural forests or avoiding deforestation, where there's lots of questions how real that is and how serious that is and how do you measure it. In our case, we're saying, look, we, we start with barren soil, we put the plants in, we know exactly what the carbon was when it started, we know what, what the plant is bringing, we can tell you how much carbon actually there is. There is, and regarding bamboo, which is amazing, I mean, there's also another thing most people don't know is, you will use bamboo, but while you're cutting down the, the culms, which are mature, you give more energy to the mother plant or the right. mother stem, and you get new seedlings. New so true, we're not true. cutting down anything, actually. You're like contributing to the plant to grow faster. I mean, true, this is true, true beauty of yeah. nature, right? <laughs> it is totally. And it's, it's what I always find the interesting thing talking with foresters. It's the one thing foresters have a real problem with. Yeah, you I know, imagine. When you I say imagine. to manage your bamboo fo forest, you have to cut. And they go, yeah. no, 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 no. You have to leave it. It's better. <laughs> you go, no, not with bamboo. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting thing that. Yeah, bamboo management means cutting, managing. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really about like have thinking of the energy. If if they're mature, they're like already they've done their cycle. They're absorbed the CO two. They've done all that, and basically, you're we're helping the plant, cutting them, and then using them for something different. Yeah, yeah, and of course, any any carbon that sits in the in the coal, if you then use that to make furniture or to to make flooring. It stays in. Mm -hmm. It's it's yeah, absolutely. It's Unless you, we do carbon uh, bamboo, which is interesting too, and would use it for briquettes, like for the oven, mm -hmm. then we would burn it again. But True. still, 
it's uh, it's still interesting, and uh, we and, can also use know, it. according to the international rules of the Inter international panel of, of climate change, you can still call that green energy, which is better than, than coal or oil because it is a renewable resource. So in fact, it's still considered to be a very positive aspect compared to the alternatives. I mean, this is just like like a bright future. Uh, and uh, again, uh, amazing what you're uh, building there um, with uh, that. What is uh, from Holland, the company? Um... The company is, is originally based in Holland. Yeah, but we've okay. now set up a subsidiary in Portugal. OK, OK, of course, because having then the biggest bamboo uh, 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 forest there, planted forest, uh, you need that probably. So yeah. um, we have like uh, some five minutes left. I don't know if you have um, any other um, bamboo related um, things you would like to share or have in mind um, regarding the future in Europe, maybe the bamboo. Um, there is a big event where you're going right. to attend. Yeah, I Germany. was going to say that. I mean, there's a couple of things <laughs> happening. On the one hand, very interesting. I'm talking with some colleagues in England about seeing what we can do in the UK. So there's an initiative going there you know, bamboo in the Midlands, which I've been part of. Um, and they're looking at how 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 possible would it be to develop something in the UK? Um, but I think what you mentioned there is the European Bamboo Expo. Exactly. This is a, a conference taking place in Germany, in Dortmund, uh, the beginning of June. Um, and it's bringing together not just European bamboo people. I mean, I talked with the organizer the other day and I said, you know, are you bringing back everybody in Europe? And he said, no, no, no there are people from all over the place. So I think Colombia may well be represented. I don't yeah. know. Certainly, he's getting people from, from Asia. I know he's got somebody from Vietnam, I think from China. Um, US is there. So it's going to be a sort of a, you know, a global discussion about bamboo, but with the European slant. Yeah, and the entry is free. I think that's pretty amazing, too, which is uh, not always the case in such uh, True. international events. I'll try to be there. Maybe we get a chance Wonderful. to talk there. And um, I'll be there. For I mean, sure. it's, it's a unique thing, right? It's like the first event, bamboo-focused event in, in Europe. The first big one, yes. The first big one, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think there have been smaller meetings, but I think this is the first real European initiative. And I say, Heraclius, I have to give him, you know, hats off to him. When he started two years ago, I said, well, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but it's it's growing. He's yeah. got some, some, you know, support from various uh, directions. And I say, we, we're, we're, we're supporting it. Bamboo Logic is. I will be there. One of my colleagues will be there as well. We're speaking. So, um, oh, it'd be good. It's going to be very exciting. I think uh, we're really at times where we need like smarter solutions, um, not just geopolitically, really also thinking uh, climate wise and, and, mm. and all the situation we have on the planet. Um, so, um, we really need uh, alternative smart solutions True. happening soon and fast and this is what bamboo is about right i mean okay it I mean, takes bamboo, five yeah it, it takes i mean I, I always said that you know even when i was in china and i still say it, bamboo is not a silver bullet you know it's not the the solution to everything but it's so often forgotten that's the sad thing yeah. um, and i would like it to be included in the plans and included in the discussions um mm -hmm. and again you know as you say there's not much time left but whilst whilst it's fantastic to start this all in europe what I always find amazing is Africa has a lot of bamboo and it's often forgotten in all the discussions yeah. there. You know, when they talk about sustainable development, agricultural development, bamboo is not mentioned because, again, people think about agriculture as food crops and not about other opportunities. Bamboo would be. And when they mention jobs, them... it's good for the environment and, and local people can can basically work with it. So it's it really, you know, people, profit and planet triple impact positive yes. and true regenerative natural <laughs> yes yeah 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 okay well fantastic thanks again hans i think um we're um having uh we're yeah there. we're getting there yes exactly um um i'll uh, create a blog post about this podcast fantastic and um i hope um we'll see each other in germany at the bamboo event the very first one and I wish you um, all the best with uh, this huge project in uh, Portugal. Really uh, following it, I'm very excited because I mean, uh, I'm here too now in uh, Europe, in Switzerland. And um, yeah, more bamboo here will be for sure something uh, 
very nice in future. <laughs> Great. Well, JJ, fantastic talking with you. See you in, uh, in Dortmund. Hopefully in see you there. Yes, have a great time and take care. All the best. Thank Hans. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.